Hey, what's up, everyone? <laughs> hey, Brownie. I guess he didn't want to be on camera. I am Jay Dudley, and back home, back home from deployment for Grindstone. Uh, there's a lot of things going on out there after the hurricane hit. Our advance team went out there, got a lot of stuff done, making connections, getting us a fob, then uh, getting equipment there, me driving equipment out there, then having to turn around, go back, go to Self-Reliance Festival at the uh, SOE headquarters, then met up with TJ and a few others, then back to Jonesboro, Tennessee, so we can go and help, help and do what we do for Grindstone. But it was such, such a different storm. You couldn't explain the scale of things with the storm. It, it was like just spread out massive and wide to where, uh, where it was just trees driveways and everything laid out and either your house was full with mud or your house was just gone because the the damage wasn't necessarily from the wind it was the rain and the flooding that happened and all of that rain up in the mountains the only way way in place it could go is down all the creeks and then to the rivers and uh, as far down as it can go to wherever it goes. I don't know where the, the end point in the, um, that area for where it goes, whether it's out to the ocean, but seems like it's inland. So I, I don't think that it's going to hit the ocean. It'd probably go to a lake or something further down or a re reservoir. But all the reservoirs that were there and the dams and everything, they didn't break. But they got so full that water was just coming over the top. It was just too much. The, the area couldn't handle it. And from it not being able to handle it, the infrastructure wasn't set up for it. So you have all of these roads and everything, beautiful scenic mountains and a road cut in going to desolate places where you're, you, if you live there, you know everyone there in that community. And for some of those communities, that river, that scenic view, that was it for him. All that water came rushing through to where you're up high. The river is usually 10, 15, 20 feet down below you. And then with so much rain water and from the road, it was 30 feet above that coming rushing through like whitewater rapids and it's like a, the eraser tool just scratched and etched everything away it's a, an unbelievable sight now you're you're going to see the resiliency of those people because a lot of them were really proud. It's like, I don't need any help. Well, what happened? This one lady that I met, she came and told me her story. Like, hey, I, I, I'm just wondering if me and my husband could come get a shower. Okay, um, how are you doing? Uh, do you need anything? No, we don't need anything. We just need to take a shower. Okay, uh, is everything okay? We have tons of supplies and stuff. And she was like, I... I don't know. I she started to have survivor's guilt because she was in her house and she saw her neighbor's house f 
floating down the river. That's one thing to see. It's like, oh, that super sucks. But then she realized that her neighbors were in their house as it's floating down the river. She has some of it on camera where she's screaming for them. They're screaming for her. And then the house just goes underwater. And that's it. Those people are never to be seen again unless when they're cleaning out all of this mud and muck and silt and whatever other debris got washed down river they'll find their bodies possibly still inside their house but who knows she didn't want anything she was like they're good they're trying to figure out water we have pallets of water how about this when you are done with your shower i'll have you pull around and we'll go through everything that you need to keep you afloat she was like yeah it's been kind of rough i was like okay well do you want to talk about it and she told me the story that after she saw her neighbors float away now this is a 65 70 year old woman i didn't do the math on it to guess her husband was in nam so if you can calculate uh around and her and her husband are close to the same age or he's a little bit older than her i'm not exactly sure but uh her husband served in nam after that happened they were concerned about looters so then what do they do when they're current concerned about looters, well, she put on a ghillie suit, grabbed two shotguns, her night vision, and she was out there patrolling her property, making sure nobody came and looted their stuff. They didn't have electricity. Uh, they... They had some flood damage, some mud, and all this other stuff. But they're good. They, she said they didn't need anything. I like, guess you do. Whether it's a hug, you needed to talk to someone, you need it, your water doesn't run anymore, take some water, take some food. This is your supply shop. Come in any time that you want, and we'll take care of you. That's, that's what Grindstone does. We, we try and help those that can't help, help themselves, especially when you end up in an area that government isn't showing up in. Or they tell you online, if you qualify and you jump through all of these hoops and you don't have homeowners insurance that yeah we'll give you seven hundred and fifty dollars for your losses what is the system for if that's what you do when people are in need just give them a pat on the shoulders like all right you'll figure it out trust us we're the government Ronald Reagan was right when he said, if somebody ever says that to you, they are 100% lying to you because I've seen it with my own eyes. There's so many different things that happen through all the deployments. You start to see a pattern, a pattern that it's not really, really worth talking about because if I'm... If I'm not giving you uh, some bullet points of everything that went on, why even discuss it? There's plenty of other channels that are talking about how this agency is doing this and blocking that and hiding this and uh, trying to cover up that and they know what they did. 
most times you'll find out about this if you're watching C-SPAN and there's a, was what is what would that be a tribunal or a oh a congressional hearing that's what'll happen but nobody watches or pays attention to those no it's too boring i'll get the little snippets that somebody will put up online and sensationalize it and uh, make you think this person is crazy because they uh, represent this party or anything like that it becomes nauseating. But I'm back home to where my wife and Chunk are safe. Football was out there with me. He was doing an excellent job running machinery and doing his thing so he's going to turn out good after all it's going to take some time so he can keep focused and uh, keep on the grind but he's going to turn out good little bumps in the road but i'm proud of him he made me smile especially some of the good reports that um i was getting about him and then it really made me smile when some of the bad reports about him was coming out also. Like, oh, he's driving the equipment too fast. <laughs> Wonder where he gets that from. Slow down, son. Be safe. Watch where you're going so you don't run over anything or anybody. But I'm home. I'm safe. I'm at peace. My dogs are here. Just so I could go to Sukkot. I, I, I have to go back. I'll be back out in Jonesboro, Tennessee in a week or two. Whether it's to go back to work or just grab the equipment and all the trailers and all that other stuff and turn right back around and come back home. That tends to happen towards the end of our deployments. Hey, Dudley's going to go drive all the heavy equipment, but now it's even more of a blessing. Brothers like Ezra that we can count on that has a CDL and has the experience and doesn't mind driving. And uh, he just pushes forward he gets on that grind and goes me i i was doing all the media stuff if y'all haven't noticed or not subscribed to grindstone on youtube tiktok uh facebook instagram threads x was putting up posts doing the best that I could to uh, to compile the message so that I can convey it to everyone, even though quite a few of the times I wasn't the one taking the pictures or the videos because I was needed someplace else. I was needed to be the direct point of contact. Everyone was told to go see Dudley. And information and uh, this is what's going on. This person needs that. Uh, this family uh, needs to save a message in case other family members come there. Uh, these people are stranded up on this mountain. Uh, uh, this team member or volunteer doesn't know what to do or who to contact or who to go to. This message needs to go upstairs to our intel team. These uh, people are rolling out, having to keep tabs on all of that. I felt good doing it because I did not want to fail. 
I didn't want to fail any anybody that counts on me. That's my biggest thing. I'm going to put up and and grind whatever position you need me in. That's what I'm going to do. It's just appreciating the wind rustling through the trees. But yeah, uh, Sukkot starts tomorrow evening going to go live in tents. That bothered me for a little bit. I'm rushing back to drop everything, to get to my family, to go live in a tent, a temporary dwelling, because we're commanded to do that biblically. But there's going to be some people that it won't be a week for them. It's going to be a couple of months for them. Or maybe it'll be the rest of their life that they're living in a tent. Because there's, there's no support. What are you going to do with $750 when you didn't have flood insurance? So the insurance company isn't going to cover the loss of your house. The road that you lived on is completely washed out. So you can't get to and from work. But if you could... Your vehicle is up there in a tree because that's where the water settled and caught your vehicle that was floating down a river. Your homeowner insurance, it's not, you, you didn't have flood insurance. Even though you live on the top of a mountain, who would have thought? And now you have to start over from, from nothing. And you have to live in a tent. We were getting propane out to people. We were getting kerosene out to people. Coats, jackets, sleeping bags, all this stuff. It's all so temporary. I pray that they find a way because it's it's heartbreaking. I, I know that I've I've stress inoculated myself over the years watching what goes on around the world. So on the outside, nothing really bothers me. And I just try to continue to push forward. I count my blessings each and every day because I know one slight step in this direction and everything turns to crap. But I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the life that I live. I'm grateful for the people that I'm around. I am grateful for all that I am blessed to do. Met so many good people while out there serving, people volunteering, people having like-minded life spans or uh, life qualities like jujitsu. Is quite a few people that that I'm going to connect with. There are also some people that are looking for community that want to come out and visit. So maybe we'll make that happen as time goes on because they are alone in their walk or they haven't even stepped on a pathway to their walk to be able to understand why the father created them to do what it is that they do. And now having that experience with us and how we do things, how we move, how we, how we 
show our joy, how we will drop everything for someone else and they want to do that too. How do we sign up to do that? Well, you kind of did when you volunteered at Grindstone. But that volunteering doesn't make you us. That's something that everyone has to understand. You don't just become us. There's a, a feeling out process. We can hang out, we can spend, have some dwell time together, but it doesn't always work. It doesn't always work out because many have showed up, many have disappeared. So time could go on and we may be passing on ships going in different directions all the time, or we can share these little moments in time and come together when it's needed. Because we're on that same drive, that same, that same task to help someone else. We can always be on the same path when it's like that, but everything else might not work out. So don't stress yourself. It will always work out in the father's time. Got to meet some amazing people out there. <laughs> I even got to meet Wrangler Star. We had some interactions, uh, not in person, but online from my time when I was at Refuge. And it all culminated to this point in time, what is it, three, almost four years later? I don't know what it was that got him to mobilize, to fly out to the East Coast. It was the father calling him because he needed to come to church with us. He needed to see what a midrash was about. He needed to see, are we really who we seem to be online or who we seem to be when business is talked about, who we seem to be when when we're under pressure because he's in a, a particular situation out there on the West Coast where he's developing his crew, his war band. Just as we are developing our tribe out here so that one day something kicks off we know where we can go and he knows where he can go and we'll be safe and protected and all of that this is how community starts you check each other make sure that there's truth and honesty among you and then you move forward together. He even gave me this patch right here. <laughs> Act accordingly. <laughs> but it's 22-22 right now. On October 15th, Tuesday, October 15th, my phone isn't ringing or buzzing like crazy. The chunk is asleep. My wife is in the living room drying her hair because my time away, we needed, we all needed to have some bonding time together. And 
washed and retwisted the chunks hair and washed and retwisted my wife's hair. But even then, the messaging doesn't stop because of what I do for Grindstone, I am involved. I'm involved always. Emails are constantly coming through. Text messages are coming through. Information is needed. So it never stops. And I'm not even at the top of the food chain. We still got preps to do for Sukkot. And so much more. So maybe I need to go do that stuff or I need to go spend more time with my wife. I need to go get some sleep, turn my brain off for a little bit. Out here with my dogs. Two of them are here right now. Skunk is over here and Brownie is over there. Everybody else is off running on a mountain. This mountain that the Father has blessed me with. 